Welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, where today we're checking out Action Attraction. Action Attraction was released by Tomy in 1995, or at least that's what BoardGameGeek.com says. I'm going to go with them on the date, but there is no real evidence for that that I can find. The box itself, the instructions, the moulded plastic components, none of them have got any copyright date on them, so I really don't know where that date has come from. Looking at the box artwork and the packaging though, I would say that this definitely is a mid-90s vintage game, so I'm going to go with 95. You can see the box is nice and bright and colourful. I really like this vivid yellow that they've gone for here and the balls themselves on here are really bright colours. It describes itself as the tense tactical family game that bursts into mad magnetic fun and I have to say it really can get quite tense in this game and it is tactical. And unlike a lot of games, this is actually a 1-8 to eight player game. So you can play it solo, or you can actually play it with up to seven friends, which is pretty much unheard of in vintage kids games of this kind. On the back, there's really not much to see. It's pretty boring. We've got a diagram of some uh, game setups here, and most of this is taken up with the rules of the game. As far as I can tell, there's no rules leaflet that comes with this game, so the rules are actually printed on the back of the box in four different languages. It is a very simple game, but it's a lot of fun. Let's have a look. Action Attraction is just a really simple game with really simple components. The base here is basically just a single piece of plastic which has been formed into shape. It's not quite a single piece of plastic because we've got a little piece of movement mechanism here. And that is so that you can select the difficulty. What we can do on here is if we want to play a difficult game, we have it in one position. If we want the game to be easier, we move it into the next position here. When you move it from easy to difficult or vice versa, there's just a little spring-loaded clip here which moves and locks it in place. And the only other component is this box here of magnetic balls where you get seven of each of the different colours. If you're doing a two to four player game, the initial board will be set up like this. If you're playing two players, each person will have 12 balls. If you're playing three players, each person will have eight balls. In a four player game, each person will have six balls. If you've got five or six people playing, we've got a different initial setup for the board. And with five people, each person has got six balls. For six players, each person has got five balls. For seven players, we've only got one ball in the middle. Each player has got four balls and we've completely run out of space to hold the balls. With eight players, we start with no balls on the board at all. Each of the first seven players gets four balls and the eighth player gets only three balls. They've only got three balls because, because they're going last, they're going to have the toughest job. So they get less balls to have to put down. As you can see, depending on how many players you've got, you're going to end up with the ball colours completely mixed. So the actual colour of ball that you use does not matter at all. You can have a single colour or you can have mixed up colours. It doesn't matter at all for this game. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to show you with a two player game setup with 12 balls each. And the game is really, really simple. All you need to do is take it in turns with you and the other person that you're playing and place one of your balls anywhere you want onto the board and that's it. Simple as that. Your go and then the person you're playing, their go. And it is the first person to manage to get rid of all of their balls successfully is the winner. It is that simple. Of course, the fun part of the game comes in that they're actually magnetic. So it means that when you're having your goes, you're going to have to try to keep them as spaced out as you possibly can, which is not too bad at the beginning of the game, 
but as you go further on in the game and start using up more and more of the spots it gets more and more difficult because you're going to have to start putting those balls closer and closer to each other. As you can see, the more balls that go on here, the more harder it gets, but they also sometimes start to move and that can really give you the shakes as you do this because it gets more and more tense the more you get on here oh now those two have just stuck together so because they have stuck together that player has got to take both of the ones that stuck together back to this person of course, the best thing to do normally is to play your ball into a space that's just been vacated by somebody else's balls. Oh dear. Let's see. It's getting crowded now. I find that it's easier to get them into these outside spaces than any of the other ones. Once you start getting on the inside ones and some of those magnets have lined up with the poles, it starts getting really tricky. Mm. <laughs> and things like that happen. Oh, and that means that, that player is going to have to take all of those balls. The movement, because of the way that the poles rotate and line up, is really, really random. You do not know what is going to happen. And that person has ended up with absolutely loads. Now, as I said, there are two difficulty settings in this. Normally, as an adult, I play this in difficult. It is possible to move it to easy, but I find with easy, it's just too easy. In easy, it's possible to get all of the balls on there. Not too much problem. That would not be possible in difficult. In difficult, as you saw earlier, they all kind of stick together. I had one little teething problem there, but I managed to get them all down in easy. In order to actually play this as an adult, you really need to have it in difficult. So as you can see, it's a really simple game. The components are simple. The tactics that you have to use are simple. The gameplay is really simple and easy to explain. But that doesn't mean that it's not fun. This is actually one of my favorite games to play with other people. And in our house, this is probably one of the ones that gets played the most. I brought this into the school where I work and the kids there absolutely loved it as well. The magnetic action, the randomness of that, them all firing together with the magnetic attraction. It's really fun. You do not know what is going to happen, how many balls you're going to have to pick up, whether the whole thing's going to kind of explode and you're going or implode and you're going to have to take all of those balls. There can be loads and loads of different things happening and it's really good fun. For me, I like things which are themed. So it's kind of simplistic. It's kind of, yes, it's adults could play it, kids could play it. It's, uh, I don't want to say boring, but the board for me does have a boring kind of look. It's functional, I think is probably the best word for it. For me personally, I think this game could look great 
if they had themed it with some kind of spooky theme. I'm always going for spooky games and horror. So for me, if they had taken the board and molded it out of say green plastic with maybe some bubbles sculpted into it as if it was the top of some witch's cauldron and instead of playing just normal colored balls onto the surface if they were colored eyeballs that you were putting into a witch's cauldron that would have taken it just to another level of interest for me i think more kids would have been interested and bought it and played it um, and that just would have really hit that horror spooky uh, button for me and I would have liked it a little bit more. But as it is, I really, really like this game. And this game can be picked up really cheaply. There's quite a lot of them out there on eBay and they do not go for a lot of money. It's not a particular popular game. So maybe four or five pounds you can get this for. And at that kind of price point, with the playability on this game, the number of players you can play it with, the fun, bursting, magnetic action, I really, really recommend this game. It's definitely one worth picking up. As a filler game, it's excellent. As I said, we play this a lot in our house and uh, it's a really good game. So for me, this is a definite one to pick up for the collection. Until next time, this is Attic Raiders Retro Reviews.